Hey guys, Brendan Bradford from Sporting News here. We're down in Wollongong at the Wynn Entertainment Centre for Paul Gallen versus Lucas Brown. An absolutely stacked card, absolutely great night of fights, which are about to get underway. We're outside the changing rooms. We're gonna have a chat to some of the fighters, see how they're going ahead of their fights. Let's go check it out. Gloves went on. Are we, are we finally settled this? Yeah, uh, yeah. everyone's been telling me all day, Dory, it'll be sorted, you know what I mean? Like, uh, give it the wink and all the rest of it. Um, it's good to actually get them on my hand and think, yeah, no, they're all right. So, yes, yeah, so I've still got to get my hands wrapped, etc. But uh, there's a lot more room. Like those first ones I put on, literally, I couldn't get my actual hand in it, let alone wraps and stuff like that. So, yeah, a bit, bit of peace of mind uh, now knowing that shit actually fits. So, yeah, it's good. What was the story? Will Tomlinson flew them up from Melbourne this morning or something? Yeah, but it's something about uh, Melbourne to Sydney to, yeah, so thanks Will, <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, but that, that they want, uh, everyone wanted uh, obviously just sponsorship and stuff like that, they wanted their Everlast, so yeah. that's what they had to do. You've been in this situation, well, you know, pre-fight situations plenty of times, yeah. how, how, what are your nerves, what, what's the feeling right now? Uh, like, yeah, this is what, 32 boxing fights now, you know, and I've had that eight MMA, a couple of other here's and there's. So yeah, for me, this is just, uh, this is what I do, you know what I mean? So, six rounds again, I don't have to go 12, you know, all that sort of stuff, so six rounds, fan friendly, fast as, happy as. Yeah. And I had no idea, I had nothing to do with any of it. Uh, it's up to the promoters, my team's looking after it, so I had absolutely no idea um, when the gloves got here, how they got here. I didn't really even buy into the issue yesterday, I just got on with it, weighed in, went home, and just been re relaxing today. How's this sort of compare to, you know, I don't know whether it's an origin or a grand final or just a regular big NRL match. What's the sort of comparison? Yeah, look, all games were big. Um, so it's, yeah, I have the same nerves and um, the same energy running around, but um, it's probably a little bit more boring, actually, as far as until you actually get in there, because I suppose with rugby league, you're getting shoulders strapped and ankles strapped and knees and fingers and thumbs and all sorts of different things. And then you go out and you warm up for about half an hour these days at least. Or the coach probably talks to you for 10 minutes before and you walk out for half an hour, come back in, have another talk for probably five minutes before you go out. So there's sort of a almost a, you know, probably an hour and a half before the game that's pretty well taken up and pretty well occupied but as far as boxing goes it's not you don't occupy that much time so you sort of just sit around and relax and have a chat that's all you can do it was a good one it was a really good one the um you know, he, he come in, he, he was really game, he was really competitive and um, caught him with a good right hand and I actually seen the mouth guard go flying out of the ring, I, I see exactly where it landed and, um, and you, you know, the, the ref, ref jumped in and, and said the um, mouth guard had come out so he, um, you know, did what he had to do. Bit of blood on your shorts, bit, not bit, yours? Bit of blood, I don't think it's mine, I, I still hope all my skin's intact but you know, a couple of marks around here but you know, that's, um, I, I, again, it's been a little bit of layoff for me. I haven't, um, I haven't been in the ring since you know December 2019, so good to blow the cobwebs out a little bit, and now we're just got to move forward. Mate, I don't think I've ever been that nervous in my life, and uh, my heart was dead set in my throat there for a bit. And um, from the get-go, don't, don't get me wrong, I was 100% confident in Ty, and um, he went out there and, and got the win. That was the main thing. Mate, I'm, I'm still sort of almost a bit shaken from it, and um, but it's, it's like nothing you've ever sort of witnessed. And mate, I, I take my hat off to every single fighter that gets in the ring. It's an absolutely different beast, and. It, it takes a hell of a hell of a man to be able to get in the ring. So um, I'm super proud of him, super stoked, and um, so so is his family, mate. It's um, he's, he's put in so much hard work and and dedication to to be able to get to where he is, and mate, I'm super stoked for him. Yo, I persevered and learned a lot. Travel tribulations daily, lonely clips to taking shots. Most these niggas try to play me. It's kind of hectic on the daily, baby. People shady. It's like depression. My confessions get baby pay me. A couple friends of mine that got these deals and acting phony, but that's the cross across the bed. No doubt I peep it. Homie, sometimes I'm feeling divine, sometimes I'm losing my mind. I freak the beat, the beat, the beat, the beat, the beat, the grind. In tabernacles, I battle rappers and shatter shackles. Half the pack will pack and the crackle, just like an Adam's apple. And Lenny Zappavinia, a couple of years out, but you look bloody good. How did it feel? Yeah, it was good, man. It was um, excited to be back, fight at home. It was, you know, good first fight back, you know what I mean? Um, it was a good fight, good win, you know, and I'm wrapped to be back, you know, it's good to fight at home. Yeah, I caught him with a left hook, and once I hit him with that hook, I could see that. He was gone, but he was still all right. He was moving around. I just sort of still had to be patient and, and just pick my shots when he slowed when he slowed down. So I just worked away, and referee jumped in and called the fight. And what is next for you? You mentioned Jeff Horn the other day. There's a, a few names around welterweight. Is it, you want to stay at welter? And, and what's next? Yeah, absolutely. Um, look, I'm, I'm I'm definitely campaigning at welterweight. I'm you know definitely strong in this welter. I've moved up from junior welterweight, so 
Jeff Horn is, is a great fight for me. Um, he's got the international experience. I've got the international experience. We've both had a roller coaster ride of a career, and I think we can hit off a really great fight. So um, that's something maybe that come in the future. But then who knows? You know, I don't know where I'm going to go from here. I'm just going to keep fit and see what happens. Feeling amazing, ready to go. Just uh, going to soak it all up, enjoy it. And yeah, we're just talking with Brian and the team. If boxing's a tough sport, but if you don't soak up and enjoy these moments, we shouldn't be boxing. So I'm going to enjoy every second tonight and then get the job done and then just get straight back in the gym and look forward to the next fight. Yeah. 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 Uh, pardon me in my tone. Can't step to my throne. They ain't working like me. I did this on my own. You asking where we been? I don't know where to begin. All this dirt on my skin. I just came here to win. I'm more than a man, I'm a monster. Somebody called Pastor Doctor. I got a six cents for imposters. So now I'm coming for the whole roster. It's not a game, why you playing with me? You could double back, lose track, try and hang with me. It must be in my veins. Something you can't... Steve Spark, mate, what a fight. Talk me through your emotions right now. Yeah, look, I'm just overwhelmed and it's all a bit surreal right now. This is sort of something I've dreamt about since I was 14 years of old. So to be able to get in there and, and fight someone like Jack Brubach, who's been there with the Tim Zoos and been at the highest level of this sport and to be able to get a good win over him, go down in the first round, learn a valuable lesson and, and grind the fight out and get a win. I'm just overwhelmed and, you know, look, I'm very proud of myself and I'm proud of my team and how we went through with this and, you know, me and Jack delivered entertainment for the fans. We said what we we're going to bring it. Look, me and Jack are good mates. We were texting in the lead up to this fight and, and to get this fight over the line, me and him were texting and said, why don't we fight it? Give the fans what they want. And look, it's all just to give the fans the excitement, the entertainment. People got behind me and Jack and I think of all these fights tonight on the undercard, the eyes are on me and Jack and we, I think we delivered from what I felt inside the ring. Jack Jack Brubaker has never been in a boring fight. Um, what was it like sitting uh, ringside, obviously, in his corner? Yeah, it was, it was difficult. You know, we went through a lot of things. And um, what he done in the first minute of the fight, or the, that's what we plan on doing for the fight. Sometimes you can get a little carried away and your, and your plan goes out the window, which it, it did with Jack. Jack's just one of those guys that uh, it's tough. And look, there, there were times I wanted to stop it. In the sixth round, I told him I was going to stop it. But, then he'd hurt him a couple of times. I thought that he, if I thought that he couldn't hurt him at all, he wasn't a chance of not, I would have stopped it very early, but I just thought that Jack has the power to hurt him. So I, you know, I'm a little bit cranky at myself for um, letting him cop the, uh, the punishment the last couple of rounds, but I just wanted to give him every opportunity. Always, always nervous and fearful, but I just bring it back to my training and the effort I put in. That's what I did in rugby league, and that's what I've done now. And I don't understand what all the people think I've been doing the last 11 weeks. You know, like I've been training my ass off and sparring the best guys I can spar, the best guys I can find, and you know it showed tonight. Thankfully, I don't know why I said it to myself, but all day I woke up this morning. It's just within my, I didn't say it to anyone, so but I, but I knew within myself, I said, I'm going to win this in the first round. I'm, I'm going to knock him out the first round. I don't know why I come into my brain, I don't know why I come into my head, but I just kept saying to myself, and the whole prep, like early on, my team kept saying, man, you've got to win this first round, you've got to take it to him in the first round. He's an experienced fighter, he can go, he can go. You've got to show him that he's in a fight early. And I kept saying to myself, I'm going to, I'm going to knock him out, I'm going to knock him out the first round, I'm going to knock him out. I kept saying it to myself, and yeah, it happened. When I, when I, when I heard him, I just... You know, did what he did to be honest, just jumped on him and um, yeah, it felt good. I, I didn't want to rush him, he was sort of holding his right hand out and I could, now that's what, um, Hunt didn't do that because he didn't have the reach that he had, but try to, trying to get under it, 
that, that turn Hunt was front that right hand, and I knew that was, I'm pretty sure that was he was going to do his weight, and I could see him winding up. So I didn't want to rush straight back in, and then I think, um, I sort of I think he, as he threw it out, I ducked and got him in the body, and that might have hurt him a bit, and then just kept following up. So you know, I thought I weighted up good, and and um, I thought I was like, while I was swarming on him, while like jumping on him, I was, I was patient, and I wasn't reckless in jumping in, because you know, the last thing to go is someone's power, especially a bloke that size, and if he had got me something, it would have hurt, but um, yeah, thankfully I yeah, did, wasn't reckless and got it done. We're in for a fight, someone's got to win. Um, I don't know where exactly I got hit the first sort of shot, but around here. But basically I can't hear in my left ear, so it just took the equilibrium off me. Um, <laughs> I couldn't recover. So he did the swarming and uh, well done to him. Yeah. I didn't exactly listen to the game plan. <laughs> Uh, the jab came out nice, which was good, but uh, I wasn't squaring up enough and stuff like that. So the game plan didn't go too planned. But um, yeah, I started. I, th I think his nose started going red straight away with two with two jabs. So I thought, oh, we're off to a good start, but didn't end up that way. Definitely not the last fight. Um, I, I've, it's been like a year and a half since my uh, my last fight. So I want to try and stay active as I can, um, whether it be someone like a Solomon Amono or something like that. But I, I do want to, within the next couple of months, have another fight. I'll have a crack at anything, you know, and um, just have a go. The, the problem, the problem is, with, you know, people get so scared these days because of social media and things like that, and then the backlash you're going to get. And I knew coming down here tonight after the build-up and who I was fighting. Had I lost tonight, like, imagine turning up at Penrith Park tomorrow. Had I lost tonight, whether I got knocked out or whether I'd lost, like I would have been ridiculed. But you know, that's there's no shame in just having a go. And, that, and the people who ridicule and try and have a go at each other, they're cowards. They won't have a go themselves. So. Any kids out there, any little people, or anyone, just get out there and have a go. Have a go at whatever you can and just try your best. You know, you're not going to succeed at everything, you're not going to be the best at everything, but just have a crack.